Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's show, Andrew and I are going to talk about nutrition, hydration, the, the things you can do before, maybe during, after to get the most out of a training session. Stick around. Um, I feel like we should have had sandwiches ready to go for this one. Oh, that would have been good. But, but we didn't do that. That's okay. If you want to go deeper on this or any other episode that we've ever done, because there's a whole bunch of them, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. There's a search function. If you're interested in something related to martial arts, we've probably done an episode or seven on it. So go ahead and search. You can also find people that have been on the show. And if there's someone that you are interested in us having on the show, hasn't been on the show, you should recommend them. There's a guest submission form over there. The bird just flew away. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm really excited. So whistlekick.com is the place to go. It's our online home. You're going to find all kinds of stuff over there. Everything that we do, and we do a whole bunch of things, all those things are linked there at whistlekick.com. For example, if your martial arts school is interested in growing, adding students, increasing profitability, improving culture, any number of things, we have a consulting offering. Myself, others will help you grow your school in a sensible, economical culture appropriate, whatever, you know, a bunch of words there way. You can also use the code podcast one five to save 15% on anything in our store. It's very windy. windy. It's very windy today. <sighs> Lots of distractions going on. So let's cut that intro and let's <laughs> jump into this episode because otherwise we're never going to get there. Ah, oh, man. All right. Andrew. Hey, Jeremy. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm great. We can do that. We're in the same we room can. this time. We can. It's, it's been, been a while. It has been, been a very long time. We recorded this together. Um, people don't tend to think of martial arts training in the way that they would think of, quote, exercise. Mm -hmm. Right? If we yeah. asked someone, nutritionally, what should you do when you're going to go for, like, if, as a runner or... Yeah. Uh, weightlifting, people understand, like, if you're going to lift weights, you probably need to eat more food, protein, yeah. things like that. But yet, so many martial artists will say one of the reasons they train is to get into sh better shape. Right. And despite that, I see very few people approaching nutrition, hydration, etc. from that mindset. Mm-hmm. Are you someone who eats before you train? I try to eat very little before I train. Um, I used to. I used to work in. Uh, we used to work at a high school, mm. private private school, and it had its cafeteria. It was a boarding school, so I could have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the school every day. And uh, I used to go to the cafeteria and then have dinner and then go to class. And I would. I would just. Be, and I started realizing. Pretty, I mean, pretty quickly, but like, obviously this is not good for me to like be so bogged down when I'm training. So I would typically go and have a salad or something really light, but I tried not to work out on a completely empty stomach because that also did not work well for me. Yeah. Now, longtime listeners, viewers of the show, yourself, you know that I spent a bunch of time like really deep into CrossFit. And one of the things that's really cool about CrossFit, there's so much synergy with martial arts. But one of the major differences is that everything is up for debate. Everything is up for discussion, for research, for testing, everything you could imagine. And so one of the things that I did, I got really deep on timing meals related to my workouts. Mm. Now, a really intense martial arts training session is very similar to a really intense any kind of exercise session. Sure. They're, they're similar. I mean, you come out, you're dripping with sweat, you know, you're dying. It takes the average person about three hours from the time they eat for food to move through enough that your body's not devoting a significant amount of energy to digestion. To digest, yeah. And that's a big thing to consider. If you're not planning when you eat and you go to class and you want to get the best out of your, your class, right? And that's, I think that we can use that as a, a blank and umbrella term, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us want to get as much as we can out of our training. Sure. Why else would yeah, we the, train, right? Like we, we There's wanna... no other reason to be going if you're not hoping to get something out of it. Right. And if I can do a few simple things and get more out of it, I think most of us would want to do that. So if I've got a six o'clock class 
I want to make sure that maybe I eat my lunch a little bit later mm -hmm. so I don't go from, you know, finishing lunch. At, thank you. <laughs> smash the mic. Finishing lunch at 1230 to now I get home at 839 o'clock and I'm ravenous or I'm stopping on the way home and eating something that maybe doesn't serve me as well. Mm -hmm. So I might have a snack. I mean, that's kind of what I heard when you yeah. talked about your salad. That's like eating. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's important to kind of experiment and to see what works for you. Most people are not going to do better eating before they train. But I have known some people who really struggle with having an empty stomach and getting getting the most out of mm -hmm. their training. So you got to try it out. Yeah, and it, and it also depends on the kind of and the high level intensity training that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I watched a video recently where someone took the time to eat like a sumo wrestler does for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And sumo wrestlers are, are consuming like, I don't, I don't remember the exact, but it was something like 4,000 calories per day, which is huge. But then you look at the high level of intense workouts that they're doing, mm -hmm. it's very different than, than this person was training were much different than what the high, the high, the quote high level intensity training that I get very very different and so you know it depends on what you're doing yeah how about water we should drink it we should drink it here's one of my pet peeves with a lot of martial arts classes water breaks hmm. if you are properly hydrated you should not need a water break in a 60 minute class even a 90 minute class yep further if, you, if I gave you a glass of water and you drank it right now, mm -hmm. would you be instantly hydrated? No. I might not be thirsty, but I wouldn't. I would not say that I was then hydrated. Right. It takes time. It takes at least 20 minutes for that water that you consume to do anything, which is why for a lot of people, their water breaks are just breaks. Yeah. Right. It's become an excuse, and it's something that, I see in a lot of martial arts schools becomes an opportunity for kids to take a break and reset without getting in trouble. Because yeah. as an instructor, us saying, well, you know, I don't want you to drink water, right? Like that doesn't go over well. Yeah. I can't tell you what to do with your kids in your school. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that for you, the best thing you can do is just like your food, time your water. I grew up in a martial arts environment where if you had to use the bathroom during class, you were allowed to. But it was your own fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know how water works. You know how drinking fluids and having to use the bathroom works. You understand that there's a delay between I drink some water and I have to pee. And if you're a functional adult, you should be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And most people can. Mm -hmm. And most people can, you know, if you figure out that timing, if you front load your hydration in the day, which is what I do. If, if, you, if you've read 12 Months to Health, the first, first chapter is on water. And the very first thing is drink a big glass of water first thing in the morning, right? If you can front load your hydration, it becomes less critical to consume fluids through the, the rest of the day and you can get to the end of class and then, mm -hmm. you know, chug a bunch of water if that's what you need to or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. So ooh, I hit it. This was my turn. Um, <laughs> this is, this is such a sloppy episode. Not sloppy is the wrong word. This is such an authentic episode. Raw. Raw. Uncut. Yeah. We're just, it's just, yeah. Um, let's talk about after. Okay. Right. You know, I mean, we, Okay, let me back up. Before we talk about after, I have friends that have done MMA fights, mm -hmm. and after their weigh-in, they're like, carbs, 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 yep. oh, give me pasta, pasta, blah. What, what's the benefit of that? Like, is, the, is there something to that? Yeah, so carbohydrates are, first off, not necessary to the body. Protein and fat is necessary. You'll die without it. Carbohydrates are not necessary, but they're cheap, easy, and they're really tasty. Not, not going to deny that. I love pretzels. Okay, <laughs> it's it's all the food groups you want. It's crunchy and it's salt. I mean, those are those are really all you want. Uh, but most people process glucose 
as fuel. Mm -hmm. Carbohydrates are a really quick way for your body to translate food into glucose. Why do all the sugars fall from trees just before winter? So we can build up those stores, right? Like this is a real thing. Animals, before they hibernate, they eat a bunch of carbohydrates. But carbohydrates also, one gram of car carbohydrate requires four grams of water for digestion, hmm. which is why when we eat a bunch of carbs, we feel bloated. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Now, in the context of, of fights and weigh-ins, we can use that to our advantage, to our disadvantage. I would imagine that the vast majority of weight cut coaches, there are actually coaches who at the high level work with pro fighters and help them get lower because it's such a specialized thing. There are fighters, just as an aside, there are fighters who are dropping 30 pounds. Which is such an insane thing to do. And I don't mean like a few weeks before they lose weight. No, I mean they remove so much hydration from their body that they are 30 pounds underweight. So if you are fighting a 185 pound fight, you might actually be fighting at 200 plus. Yeah. Which that's an advantage. Anybody who's ever fought anything with weight classes knows, I don't care how good you are. 20 pounds is a really big thing to overcome. Okay. Go watch some of the early UFCs. You can see what I'm talking about. So it, as they, they work that timing in, water plus carbs plus mm -hmm. whatever they can, you know, bulk back up gotcha. and feel better because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're, hold, they're holding that water, which maybe you feel bloated, maybe you feel gross, but maybe you also feel better. Yeah. So now let's talk about after you're done a, a big class. Yeah. Right. You sweat a bunch. You hydrated ahead of time. You ate ahead of time. You have your great class. Uh, it's, a, it's a good, intense workout. You're done dripping the sweat. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. Now what? Yeah. The It's going to depend on timing, I think, too. Some of us have no problem eating a big meal and going to bed. Some of us do. Some of us, you know, if we don't have a several hour window between when we finish eating and we go to sleep, we feel pretty lethargic. And, and most of the studies that I've, I'm familiar with show that leaving at least a couple hours for, again, that two to three hour window beforehand, yep. Yep. that same thing after before you go to sleep. Because when you go to sleep, your body doesn't digest as uh, doesn't put as much attention on digestion. So the food's kind of sitting there. Now, if you're sleeping for eight hours, slower digestions might, might not be a big deal, but mm -hmm. you know, something to consider. But I think the two main things to consider are protein and water. Protein, because no matter what you're doing, you are probably having some manner of muscle breakdown, whether you're doing some push-ups and some calisthenics as, as yep. part of your class, yep. Yep. or maybe there's some isometric stance training. There's probably something going on where having some protein would be good. Protein gets broken down into amino acids, which become the blocks that your body uses to build, build. and repair yep. muscle. It's not just building. It's not just, oh, I need to eat protein because I want to get jacked. If you do want to get jacked, you need to eat protein, but just to be healthy. Now, as an aside, you may find some benefit with amino acids, especially essential amino acids. It's the nine the body doesn't produce. There's a lot of really kind of cool stuff going on studying that. I'm, I'm experimenting with some stuff myself. I'm not going to come out and say everybody should be taking essential amino acids. But if you do, by all means, I'm not telling you not to. The other one is water. Mm -hmm. The hydration really is a big deal. And I think the easiest thing for most people is have a big bottle of water in your car for the drive home. Yeah. Drink it on the drive home. That's probably 95% of what you might miss is right there. Mm -hmm. If you're going to add some salt to it or, or some, some flavoring or whatever, just something with some electrolytes, you know, it's not a bad thing. Water. Yeah. If you sweat water, uh, there are some gyms that have scales in the bathroom. Way before and after, mm. if you want, if you want to know how much water, and then okay, I sweat three pounds of water out. I need to drink three pounds of water. I forget what the conversion is, but there you go. I should be drinking three pounds of water to replenish that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, um, I will typically, I generally eat lunch at a regular, like when I have a 
class day. Mm -hmm. I typically eat my lunch at regular noon-ish time. Uh, actually, some, it's usually around one, actually, because my wife takes her lunch break at one, and we will often have lunch together. Um, but then around, you know, five o'clock or so, I'm usually making dinner mm. for my wife and, and daughter, and they will have dinner at 5.30, 6 o'clock, but I don't because I've got class at 6.30, but I'll usually eat peanuts. I eat a lot of peanuts. Mm. I love peanuts. So, you know, I'll grab a couple handfuls of peanuts or whatever, eat those. Um, hydrating, you know, drinking water ahead of time. Sure. Um, our school does not give a water break in the middle of class, um, you know, an hour long class. So like you said, it's not really that needed. Um, and then after class, when I get home at, you know, eight o'clock or whatever, I will have a full dinner, but I'm a night person and I don't typically go to bed until 11 at night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm eating at eight. I've still got a, yeah. num a few hour window for my body to handle the food that it just took in. Um, uh, and so, you know, then I go to bed late. And you know, sleep for seven, eight hours. Yeah, I've so so. Let's let's talk about the digestion piece mm -hmm. because I, I think it's important. Because if you have not done this, if there are people who are genuinely afraid of going into a workout, a class without some food in their body, they're they're, um, oh, I just I feel better, whatever. Okay, anything you do that is new, your body will be a little resistant to. Mm -hmm. If you don't generally go four or five hours without eating food to go five, six hours without food, your body's going to give you some signals that mm -hmm. might be a little foreign. There is a difference between being hungry and not having much food in your stomach. The two are not the same thing. Also, as an aside, it's the same place in the brain that signals you on being thirsty as hungry. Mm. So if you are unsure or if, uh, let's say, losing body fat is a priority, if you have a history of not drinking enough water, have a big glass of water. When you feel that, come on, give it 30 minutes. If you are still hungry, then eat. Okay. But if you are willing to slowly cut down how much you eat mm -hmm. before you go into training, you can condition your body to understand what is happening. And the moment you start training intensively, we've talked a little bit on the show about the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system. Nervous system yeah. Fight or flight versus rest and digest, right? It's right there in there. Fight digest those <laughs> that's exactly what we're talking about so the idea that your body has food that it's making use of while you are fake fighting with your friends it doesn't happen that way yeah if you have a very leisurely class and maybe you're doing some tai chi and you're chilling out yeah fine but that's not what most of you are thinking of when we talk about this subject mm -hmm. the moment your body snaps into that sympathetic state, that fight or flight state, digestion shuts off. You're not going to notice that you're hungry. Your body is not going to send you signals. Nope. Hey, Andrew, it's Jeremy, thinking, thinking about other stuff. Go get some food. Yeah. Uh, can, can I have a cheeseburger while these people try to stab us? <laughs> right? Like that's not happening. Yeah. So don't be afraid to explore that and see how it feels. I will be very direct. Once I found this and found some comfort with this, the quality of my work, every kind of workout, martial arts, weight training, running, hiking, all got better. Awesome. I'll give you the flip side. How many of you eat lunch and then you want to go take a nap? Yeah, good point. That's carbs for a lot of us, by the way. Yeah. Uh, same thing. It's, it's the inverse of what we're talking about. Other things that you might consider uh, stimulants like caffeine or whatever, most of us are probably not going to do well with that since we train at night. Mm -hmm. But if you do, that's totally fine. Um, you probably want to avoid alcohol before you train. Not that's just in general a good rule. Yeah, and especially if you're doing weapons classes. <laughs> um, there is some interesting stuff about, you know, alcohol, of, of all the different. Um, Calorie sources, fuel sources that the body can use, not mm -hmm. calories, but um, alcohol is the one that's processed first. Interesting. Huh. So 
there it, it carries its own batch, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. why you know we don't just chug a few beers and then go train. Yeah. So as an aside, kind of a fun, fun little story. <laughs> you, you've you've been to my house, I and have. I've got this dojo, my personal mm -hmm. dojo in the backyard, and right across from it we had a shed that wasn't being used. And so my wife wanted to make it into a tiki bar. And so the thought was, you know, you can go from one to the other, but we try to go from the dojo to the bar, not from the bar to the dojo. The bar to the dojo is a, is a tough, yeah, it's a tough go. Yeah. If you have more specific questions or challenges around food or nutrition, hydration, uh, supplementation, I'm not a doctor. Are you a doctor? No, no. We, and I don't play one on TV. Ni neither of us plays one in any, even amateur context. I just find this stuff really interesting. So I tend to experiment on myself and share what I find works with others. And, and that's what we're doing here. But if you have questions, don't be afraid to reach out and ask us. Uh, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you are new, maybe you should follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. MySpace. Just kidding. We're not on MySpace. <laughs> Half of the listeners are like, what's that? What's MySpace? MySpace, the, 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 the social media platform that taught everyone HTML <laughs> very badly. Uh, if you want all the stuff, go to whistlekick.com, find all the things that we do. We've got a Patreon. You can support us as little as two bucks a month. We sell some pretty cool stuff. We've got training programs. If you want a equipment-free strength or speed development or conditioning program. Those are available. We've also got a completely free, as in like $0 ever, flexibility and mobility program that is put together with a ton of research. I spent longer on that one than I did any of the ones that we <laughs> that you have to pay for. So there we go. There are no dead birds on the porch. So we're going to call this a good day. Anything else we should add? No, I think that's good. All right. Until next time, train hard. Smile and have a great day.